Hey, how's it going? Ooh, hey, how's it going, guys? Ricky Summer here, and today I've come back in time to give up control of my synthesizers to my computer. Roll the intro. All right, so a quick story. This thing right here is the Yamaha Reface DX. It's the closest thing to a modern remake of the classic Yamaha DX7 from the 80s. They're both FM synthesizers. I don't expect you to know what any of this means because I barely know myself, but FM is a, a type of synthesis that, as far as I'm aware, is really good at mimicking both real world instruments and also creating like mad experimental like alien sounds and it's fantastic. It's sometimes referred to as the sound of the 80s. It was very popular in the 80s and a lot of really iconic sounds from the 80s come from FM synthesis and specifically the DX7. So this is a fairly recent acquisition and I'm sad to say I, I just really haven't had the time to learn it. But the other day I, I set aside some time on the weekend. I'm like, yo, I'm going to knuckle down. I'm going to figure out how to freaking use this thing aside from just like dialing in some presets and, uh, and, and, you know, synthesizer go brr. So yeah, I did play around with it and it's fantastic. I, I, I absolutely love it. It's really not that hard to program and I've already made some patches for it. So I was so excited to use it. I decided to incorporate it into a major project I'm currently working on, something I've been commissioned to write. So here we go. Okay, so we're going to plug in power first. Let's turn that bad boy on. Next, we're going to plug in MIDI. So what this does is send and receive messages to and from the computer. It doesn't actually send audio. It's just zeros and ones telling the synthesizer or the computer what notes to play. Lastly, let's plug it in to my interface. All right, so here we are in Reapervision and I'm gonna show you what needs to be done to have the synthesizer send MIDI information to the computer so then it can send the MIDI information back to the synthesizer. So then it can send audio back to the computer. I know it sounds like a ridiculous, like, like it's, it sounds like too many steps. It sounds like steps that we don't need. Can we play the synthesizer manually and just record it? Yes, we absolutely can. But what's the fun in that? <laughs> there, is, there is reason, there is rhyme uh, to my madness and I will explain it as we go along. So firstly, what I'm gonna do uh, is I'm gonna select my lead track right here. And in fact, I'm going to solo it just so it's a little bit easier to see. I'm gonna go to my sends and we pull up the little, little send kind of window here, the routing. Uh, we're gonna go to MIDI hardware output. All right, so I'm gonna turn camera number two back on and show you my interface. This is a Scarlett 18i8, Focusrite Scarlett 18i8. And it's basically, look, it replaces your sound card. It plugs in via USB and it converts analog audio to digital signals on the computer. This is how you plug in like XLR microphones, for example, into your computer and that sort of thing. And in this case, we've got the synthesizer routed all the way back under the desk into the back of this thing. And that's how we're going to record it. Okay, so now you understand what hardware we're using. I can go over to MIDI hardware output. I can select the Scarlett 18i8 USB and then send original channels. We're gonna to go to send to channel one. So I'd like to highlight that this is MIDI. We're not sending audio. That's, I mean, we can do that as well, but that's irrelevant right now. We don't need to send audio. We need to send MIDI information, the zeros and ones to the synthesizer so that then we can send audio to the synthesizer back to Reaper. Okay, so that's set up. I'm gonna tilt the camera here so you can see what's going on. I'm gonna play the track in Reaper again. You know what, let's find another sound. Yeah. Just to prove that this thing is actually producing sound, Right, there you go, how cool is that? So you might be going, Ricky Summer, what in the world? Why would you wanna do this? Why wouldn't you just play it in manually? Well, listen, <laughs> it's just a different kind of workflow. Let me, let me bring my face back up here again. So it's just a different workflow. It's the difference between 
playing something in and like programming a synthesizer. Now, just to be clear, the little melody line that, that you're seeing up here, I have already played it. I played it on, it's tucked away. I played it on just the little uh, keyboard MIDI controller, the white thing that you've seen in previous videos. I've already played it in. I just wanted to have it then play on a synthesizer. So my options would be to mimic what I'd already recorded, play it manually all over again on the Reface DX. But the issue with that is then I have no control over quantization and, and changing the notes because I'm actually recording real audio coming out of the Yamaha Reface DX. The simpler option would be to use what I've already recorded. That's already perfect. It's already sounding exactly how I want. I just want that exact melody to come through another instrument, whether it's the DX or the Roland that I've got over here. Spoiler alert, we're gonna plug in the Roland and we're gonna see what it sounds like on that as well. So not only does it save me from having to re-record it, which can take time and maybe I don't play it as well as I did the last time and I can't quantize it because I'm recording real audio. So it's just gonna take take after take after take instead of doing that. I mean, I've already done the work. It's already sounding exactly how I want. So I can just send the MIDI that already exists the solo, the melody that already exists and send it to whatever piece of gear I want. And I, it's just like switching out a software instrument on the track that's already been recorded. Okay, so now that we've got that, we're going to go to our DX track right here. And in fact, you know what? I'm going to solo these two. So now we're going to record arm that track. And is it gonna come through? It may not. So I'm going to right click on the record arm here. We're going to go to stereo. Ah, so here's the issue. I might not actually be able to show you this. Let me, let me pierce the veil here for a second. I'm going, going to go into, I'm going to hit control P and we're going to go into the audio device settings. So normally I would have it set to the ASIO drivers, which is my Scarlett 18 i 8 my interface. But in order to actually record this so that OBS can pick up both the, the audio coming out of Reaper and my microphone, I have to use wave out and then have the output device be uh, the speakers. So the input device is still the Scarlett 18i8, but I don't believe it's, it's actually not picking up all the, uh, all the inputs on it. Okay, hang on, hold on a second. I think I might be able to fix this. <laughs> All right, we've done it. So what I've done is instead of having the synthesizer plugged into one of the rear inputs on the interface, clearly the way I've got it set up right now, again, so that you guys can actually hear what's coming out of Reaper, the way I've got it set up means that only the first two inputs, the, the, like the, the one and two, track one and two, or stereo, left and right, of the interface are being picked up. So what I've done is I've plugged the synthesizer in through the front of the interface into tracks one and two, left and right. So now you can actually see <laughs> there we go. Okay, so something else going on here is this particular synthesizer, the Reface DX, has its own speakers, which is actually freaking fantastic just for playing around and practicing. The speakers aren't super amazing, like you, you don't get a lot of the low end, uh, but it's just it's just a added convenience that they've got it. However, I wanna turn them off right now. So we're gonna go to function, function, function again, speaker right there. So we hit that and now the speaker's off. Okay, so we're all set up. We've got MIDI coming out of the lead track being sent to the Reface DX. And then the audio from the Reface DX is going into the DX track and it's producing audio. So now all that's left to do is to just hit record. This is the beauty of all this. We've set it up. It's all, all the work is, is done beforehand. So if you ever feel like you hit record and you go, oh shit, stress suddenly because there's you know there's the anxiety of having to get it right and you don't want to do take after take after take it happens it happens to me I've, I've, i think i mentioned it in last week's uh music monday video 
I don't like recording vocals because there is that stress of, I have to get it right because it's a recording. So this actually works really well for me because there is no stress during the recording process. I've pre-programmed exactly what I want to come out of the synthesizer. And then all I do is hit control R and we're off to the races. Okay, so you may not have actually heard anything during that, and that's because the output was really low. I could I could crank it up on the uh, interface, but I'd much rather, well, we could do one of two things. We could compress it, or we can right click it, and we can go to, where is it? It's it's item, item processing, and we go normalize item. The hotkey for that is control shift N. I think by default, I don't think I set that up. Anyway, now you'll notice that the waveform is Thicker, it's more chonkous. So now we should actually be able to hear it. There we go, and I've put some compression on it anyway. So there will be a slight subtle difference between what I recorded previously and what I've just recorded now. And that's because right now I'm using the, the mic preamps, the inputs on the front of the interface. So they are a little bit different to the ones on, on the back. There we go. So then we can add effects on it just like we would a vocal or a guitar track. We can do whatever we want with it. That is now set. We can delete the MIDI if we want, though we would, we won't, <laughs> because we might want to use it again, like now. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is we're going to turn off and unplug the reface, and we're going to put this baby back on its shelf. <laughs> this big chonkus, this, my friends, is the Roland JDXi, and this was my very first hardware synthesizer. I have a love-hate relationship with this thing. It's a jack of all trades, master of none. You may notice it's kind of dusty. That's because I hardly use it anymore. Like high points, its drum track is amazing. So just like real quick, it's a four track kind of hybrid synthesizer, almost groove box sort of thing. So it's got a sequencer, uh, four tracks, like I said, which has a, a actual analog track, real analog. Uh, two digital synthesizer tracks and a drum track, which as I said before, is actually banging. Like it's, it's drums are possibly the best thing about it, which is just ridiculous. So you can create full songs with this or, or perhaps full grooves is probably a little more accurate. It's a little harder to make like proper structured songs with it. The reason I got this is because I like to get the most out of my money. Uh, I like to, to buy the, the best value for money products. And, and at the time I thought, yo, this thing does like everything. I can do like a full live performance with this. And that's not incorrect, but it does have its limitations. Uh, and that's why I have a love-hate relationship with it because it can do a lot, but not a lot super, super well. Anyway, I wanna plug this thing in and I wanna play around with its analog synthesizer so we can twiddle some knobs while we're recording. Turn you on. <laughs> oh baby, let's go. Destroying my desk, that's all right. That's music, baby. Here comes the hard part, MIDI. This uh, adapter we used for the Yamaha Reface DX is specific to that. It uses this kind of uh, merging mini MIDI cable. So we don't need that because the Roland Ugh. has full-sized MIDI ports. Okay, that was an ordeal. Remember when I said the Roland JDXi is a four-track synthesizer? That means that there are four independent MIDI channels like coming in and out of this thing, right? So I have to figure out which of the four tracks 
is which MIDI channel. So the one I'm looking for is apparently MIDI channel three. That will send to the analog synthesizer. So I'm assuming that MIDI, MIDI channel four, for example, will be the drum track. So we've got one and two are the two digital synthesizers, three is the analog synth, and four is the drum track. So I'm sending now the lead to MIDI channel three, which is triggering the analog synthesizer. Twiddle some knobs. So you may have noticed that, that while I, I was actually recording, I was turning a couple of knobs. I was just playing with the cutoff and the resonance. So we got that nice filter swell as we go to the, the center of the, of the recording and then towards the end. So that's another cool thing. That's another plus for using this process. When you're recording something in manually, you don't have two free hands to play with knobs and play with filters and effects and that sort of thing. When it's pre-programmed, and it's kind of playing itself, or the computer's playing the synthesizer, you do have your hands free to twiddle with knobs and, and do all those cool things that are unique to synthesizers. So now let's have a listen to it. There you go. So like, it's not a super rich sound, but let's, uh, let's put some effects on it. So I've just got delay and the super VHS. Let's see what it sounds like. bit better a little more embedded into the mix but still like that that delay is is way too strong for this particular instrument um but yeah i mean i, I could i could spend more time with the with the jdxi and get you know a much better sound out of it but just as an exercise uh to show you that we've recorded something once and then we can just send it to whatever piece of gear we want if i had more synthesizers i could send it out to more synthesizers i mean i've got this is the uh, Electron model samples. It's a sample player. This is really more for like creating grooves. Uh, this is a groove box. You would make like beats with it and, and that's what, what it's good for. I can take the samples that I use in my actual recordings that go up on Bandcamp and Spotify and whatnot. I can take those drums that I like so much and I can put them on this. So I can actually take the sounds from Reaper and play them live, which is very cool. But yeah, conceivably I could actually send the MIDI to this and play some sort of uh, instrument on this, but this doesn't have like pitch band, so you wouldn't get the full benefit of it. Uh, but as my synthesizer collection grows, we'll be able to <laughs> send uh, send MIDI to more outbound gear. <laughs> Look, this sort of thing just, just jacks me up. It's very cool. This is the beauty of synthesis and synthesizers. It's part programming, part instrumentation, you know? I mean, these things that have keyboards, you can play them, absolutely. There's the, the keytar back there, you can play that baby. You can also, yo, I could have plugged that in and we could have made some sound with that. That would have worked absolutely fine. So they're instruments, but they're also, you can also program them. And that's, that's I just think that's really cool. Like I love guitar, I love piano, they're things that you play, right? A guitar sounds like a guitar, a piano sounds like a piano. This thing can sound like whatever the hell you want. That's part of the fun of it. You program it, you create your own sounds on it, and then it is also an instrument. It's like the ultimate expression of self because it's not just your playing that matters, it's the patches you've created through it. Ah. <laughs> This is what I'm talking about, guys. This is this is why I love synthesizers, and they just they just they get me so jacked up. And I feel like 
I feel like I finally know who I am as a musician. <laughs> I started as a as a guitarist and then a singer, and now I now I'm a, a, a what do you a synth synth I'm a synthesist. A synth I a synthesist. Yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there, but let me know in the comments, do you have any hardware synthesizers? Tell me what you have and how you use it. Have you done something like this before? It's like, it's like window shopping. It's gear porn. When you tell me what you have and how you use it, it's like, it's like window shopping for me and just, it just, just gets me jacked up. <laughs> but for the moment, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to gently caress that like button, be excellent to each other, and I'll see you next time. Ricky Summer, out.